Hey guys, I'm super excited about today's video because Evergoods has finally done it. They have released the CTB26 as part of their regular lineup. A little while back, we took a look at the Carryology collaboration that they did, the Phoenix 2, which I have here. And in that video, I talked about how I really love the bag and it's almost close to a perfect backpack in my opinion. I was very sad that it was a collaboration that might not be available for everybody. That has changed now, so in this video, I'm gonna be revisiting the CTB26, talking about why I think it's such an awesome bag, and I'll also be sharing some of the alternatives that I think come closest to this as far as features and aesthetic and things like that. Before jumping in, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. And so starting off with the CTB26, the version that I have here is the Carryology collaboration. One of the biggest differences with that is going to be the fabric. So this has an X-Pack exterior with aqua guarded zippers. The interior lining is also different as it's the bright orange that is characteristic of Carryology's collaborations. There's also a slight difference in the internal layout, which I'll call out in a second. But for the most part, it's the same bag. So it comes in at 26 liters, which is meant to be a size that can work for minimal travel or your day-to-day. -day. That's one of the things that I like most about it. So it gives you a little bit more capacity than Evergood CPL24, which is another great bag, but it's not as overwhelming as their 35 liter version of this bag. It's still gonna feel maybe a little bit big for EDC, depending on your height and sizing. For me, it's slightly on the bigger end. It's a little bulky, but it's something I can work with for all the other value that you get out of this bag. And so besides the size, why do I like this bag so much? And the reason is, is that it really checks off all the boxes for what I would be looking for out of an ideal EDC or minimal travel bag. So it has two external water bottle pockets. These are fantastic. These are the same ones that are on Evergood CHZ line of bags. They offer a ton of space and elasticity. It's great that you actually have one on each side. I know not everybody loves water bottle pockets. I still like to have them. And so really great addition here. You have a very, very comfortable harness system, which is also breathable. It has Evergood's new breathable back panel. So even when it's a little bit hotter, uh, that definitely helps to keep the sweat factor down or at least make it take a little bit longer before things get really sweaty. It has a clamshell style opening. So it opens fully flat, which makes it very easy to organize. And particular when you wanna use this for travel, you can really just pack this out with packing cubes. It has an external and separate laptop compartment. So it's not in the main area. It has a laptop compartment that's suspended and it's very easy to grab your device from the laptop compartment. On the back panel, you also have a luggage pass-through, which is a feature that I've come to appreciate more and more as there are some trips where I need to travel with a rolling suitcase. Being able to rest this on that luggage is super useful. And something that not all bags get right is that the laptop orientation matches the luggage pass-through. This is really, really key as it makes it very easy to place your bag on your suitcase and easily get your laptop in and out. There's many bags that have a luggage pass-through that's oriented horizontally. The laptop compartment is vertical, so it becomes a little bit annoying to get your laptop in and out. That's not a deal breaker, but it's a nice touch. It's one of those things that really takes this bag to the next level for me. Other things that I look for in a bag are organizational options that give you variety, but are useful. And that's one of the things that Evergoods does better than anybody is independent volume for its many, many compartments. Starting with this top quick access pocket, one of the best in the game. I love these type of pockets so that I can reach down and grab whatever I need. The bag manages to stand up pretty well on its own, particularly when it's packed out, which pairs nicely with that top quick access pocket. If I place this under a seat in front of me, I can easily grab whatever I need. And then the CTV line also added this front quick access pocket, which again, just magical distribution of volume here. It gives you an impressive amount of space without eating into the main compartment. So flexible options there. On the front, you have some nice organization. This isn't that new. This has been on a lot of Evergood's other bags with some internal organization. And then the compartments on the inside also have their own independent volume, couple of different spots here. One of the differences between the Phoenix version of the bag and the newly released version is that 
This one has an internal slip pocket with some laser cut pals. The currently released version on Evergood's site just has a few rows of molly webbing similar to the CPL24 and the CTB35. So although I think it's nice to have this pocket, it's not really a deal breaker for me. I would have been just as happy with the molly webbing as I don't tend to use this that much, particularly when I'm traveling with the bag. And so, yeah, just really covering so many different check boxes. The Phoenix version for me is really good in that it has the X-Pack fabric as it gives you just maybe a touch more weather resistance, particularly with the Aqua Goddard zippers. But uh, Evergoods' nylon fabrics that they've used on their other bags are also weather resistant, very durable. They even look a little more subdued, which I like. It's not as shiny, it doesn't have the texture. The zippers on those bags are gonna work a little bit smoother than the Aqua Guarded versions here. So great to see you know, the alternative and the fact that you can actually purchase it, the non-collaboration version. So you know, if you are kind of the same preferences as me for a daily bag, looking for you know, the bag that is clamshell style, the size, the harness system, laptop compartment, pocketing, and you know you just really want something that's gonna be able to work for pretty much any use case, then this is, to me, still gonna be one of the absolute best options that you can get. The bag that I think comes closest to the Evergood CTB26 in terms of versatility and features is the Air Travel Pack 3 Small. This was actually the bag that I called my favorite of 2022. Really, really like this bag. In some ways, I even like it better than the CTB26. There's some differences that I'll call out as I kind of walk through the bag. Air could actually have a couple of bags that come close to the CTB as far as features. Their City Pack Pro and their Pro Pack 24 liter all have some of the same things that I'll call out in this video, but this one just has some additional bonuses and also the sizing if you want something that can work for minimal travel. Because this is 28 liters, it might give you a little more flexibility, particularly if you don't pack as lightly. And so diving into the bag, Airs bags are always just super robust. I love the modern, minimal aesthetic. Definitely got, you know, very sleek vibe. This is offered in an X-Pack fabric if you want something really close to the CTB26, the Phoenix version. The version that I have here is ballistic nylon, very rugged, it's gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistant. You have YKK zippers with an AquaGuard on the laptop compartment. Air's harnesses are some of my favorite. They are breathable. They have uh, load lifters to allow you to adjust the straps. I do like the harness on the CTB26 just because it doesn't have the load lifters. I'm not a huge fan of those, but both of them are super, super comfortable. Lots of breathability. The Travel Pack 3 also has a luggage pass-through on the back so you can rest this on a suitcase. It has a handle so that you can carry it. You can rest it on the suitcase. The laptop compartment here isn't oriented in the same way as the CTB26. So this is a good example of what I was talking about where you rest this on your suitcase but the laptop compartment is in this direction so it's not ideal. But I do really like the laptop compartment that Air has started using in their latest bags as it is suspended, it's padded, and it also has a soft fleece lining that's gonna help protect against scratching, which Evergood's bag does not have. So that's a nice bonus for the Air bag. And then I also like the silhouette and the aesthetic of the Travel Pack 3 slightly better than the CTB26 just because it's not as wide. So for my size and shape, it just matches up well while still offering plenty of space at 28 liters. It has an external water bottle pocket. I do think that Evergoods' pockets have a slight advantage here. They're gonna just offer more capacity and you have two of them, whereas you just have one on the exterior of the Travel Pack 3. You have lots of organization on the Travel Pack 3 Small. I kind of prefer the pocketing on the Phoenix just because it's a little less while still providing plenty of versatility. I don't always use all the small slip pockets that Air offers with their bag, but for some people, that may actually be a little bit better. The Travel Pack 3 Small has a nice top quick access pocket, again, with that soft fleece lining. And then you have the clamshell style opening main area. One additional thing that the Travel Pack 3 Small has is compression straps on the exterior, so it'll allow you to really tighten the bag down if it's not full or allow you to hold additional items on the outside. They have magnetic buckles, very easy to release, and then similar clamshell layout here, so easy for packing. And at 28 liters, it's still a size that I feel comfortable using 
for EDC. I was also able to use that as a personal item on a Spirit flight, which is one of the things that I absolutely love. So yeah, in terms of features, price point, functionality, this is gonna be maybe as close as you can get to the CTB26. And if you prefer the aesthetic, if you want some of those sort of additional features like the compression strap or some extra organization or just something that, you know, is gonna have a less wide silhouette, then this is gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. The next bag that I think also comes really, really close to the CTB26 in terms of versatility and features is the Patagonia Mini MLC, which I never would have expected prior to using it, but as I've used this bag over the past couple of months, I just continue to really enjoy it. I've taken it on some trips as a personal item. It actually fits under the seat on you know a variety of airlines if they don't measure it. And it just, you know, it, everything is super well thought out on this bag. Besides the really big upfront logo, very in your face. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of that. I definitely wish it was more subdued, but beyond that, very clean exterior, simple kind of all black fabric, uh, weather resistant. You have beefy YKK zippers on the main compartment. This comes in at 30 liters. So pretty similar in capacity, could maybe hold slightly more than the CTB26 just cause it's taller. It's not really as wide, but it can hold an impressive amount without looking overwhelmingly big. It doesn't have as rigid of a structure, so it really just kind of molds around everything that's on the inside. But you know, again, as with many of the travel bags that I love, clamshell style opening, you have the ability to use it as a shoulder bag or a briefcase with the handle and the uh, shoulder strap that it includes that also doubles as a waist belt. So really interesting bit of functionality there. Simple organization on the inside. You have a nice quick access pocket at the top that offers a pretty good amount of volume. This is again, just one of the handiest features to have while traveling or for your day to day. I actually did a short where I walked through why this bag was a really great personal item for a flight. So I'll make sure to link to that in the description if you wanna check it out. This also has a separate laptop compartment that is suspended and pretty well padded. This area opens up flat, which I don't always find to be that helpful, but if you wanna have a little more visibility, you know, it might be nice to have. You have a tablet sleeve, some nice organization on the back for your tech and other accessories. You have pretty well padded and breathable back panel. It's not as robust as the Air or Evergoods bags, but it's still gonna offer a decent amount of comfort and breathability. You have some elevated padding on the back. A luggage pass through here as well. Again, the orientation, not ideal, but still nice to have both of those features. And yeah, this has just been one of the biggest surprises to me. It's one of the bags that I go to most regularly for a trip where I need just a little bit more space and it's still a size and a silhouette that I would be comfortable using for EDC. One of the most popular EDC bags of the past couple of years is the Alpha One Niner Evade 1.5 Full and with good reason as it checks off many of the same boxes as the CTB26. Super comfortable harness system, very robust, breathable, elevated back paneling. You have a luggage pass through, not oriented in the same direction as the laptop sleeve, but still it's there, which is nice to see. Comes in at 24-ish liters, but feels like it can hold more than a 24 liter bag. I mean, it's pretty big, but not so much that I can't use it for EDC. You have compression straps, two external water bottle pockets, clamshell style main area. You have lots of organization in the main area as well as admin pockets on the front. You have a separate laptop compartment that is well padded and easily accessible. Uh, and so, you know, just tons of functionality all throughout this bag, very durable. It's offered in a variety of fabrics and is one of the more affordable options in, you know, with this level of features and size coming in at around $200, maybe a little bit less depending on the fabric that you get. So lots of different configurations. And if you're looking for something that's gonna be rugged, durable, that you can take you know, into pretty much any environment, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to consider. Another bag that is a little more in the EDC range is the Moment Travel Wear Backpack. This comes in at 21 liters. So you'd have to be a pretty light packer to use this for minimal travel, but that's definitely what I always aspire to as this is the size that can definitely work as a personal item. 
pretty much anywhere that you want to go. And I really like the appearance of this. It's very subdued and Evergoods like if I had to describe it. And you know, we've got some really nice durable fabric, aqua guarded YKK zipper on the laptop compartment. And so going back to the check boxes that I keep coming back to throughout this video, you have an external water bottle pocket. Unfortunately, there's only the one and there's no side handle, but still it is nice to have that pocket. You have pretty comfortable harness system, not quite as robust as some of the more expensive options on the list. These straps are a little thin, but they do have a nice amount of breathability. Same on the back paneling, you have some mesh here, some ridges, and you also have a luggage pass-through. It can be a little awkward to use without that side handle, but still nice that it's present. You have the separate and suspended laptop compartment, which is great to see some internal organization in that tech area. You have the compartment on the front, quick access with some internal organization so that you can swing the bag around, very Evergoods like. And then you have a compartment that's kind of three quarter opening. It's not quite clamshell, but it's clamshell enough for me to be able to organize easily. Plenty of space and because of the simpler layout, even at 21 liters of capacity, you'll be able to toss in a packing cube and at least use it for a quicker trip. Another cool thing about Moments bags is that they're part of the ecosystem that they developed, which includes a camera cube that you can place on the inside here and kind of turn this into a camera bag if you need to. You can leave it at home. There's other some tech pouches that might be worth checking out. So yeah, so really durable, simple, useful bag. And if you're looking for something with a minimal aesthetic in this size range, I definitely recommend taking a look at this one. The Modern Day Fair Backpack is a bag that I have enjoyed using a lot over the past couple of years. It was recently updated. The improvements work quite well. If you want to see what those improvements are, make sure to check out the in-depth video that I did. For this video, I will just say that this is another one of those bags that just checks off almost all the boxes for you know what I would be looking for out of an ideal work and EDC bag. This is a little more towards the EDC than the minimal travel size. It comes in at 22 or 24 liters, I believe. So a little smaller, uh, but you do have some flexibility because it's a top loading bag. You have this strap that would allow you to expand up a little bit to be able to squeeze in some extra stuff for travel, compress it down when you arrive at your destination. This is maybe one of the more professional looking bags. You know, it's got kind of a stylish exterior that might look good in a professional setting. Uh, it's not probably my favorite as far as the aesthetics of the bags in this list, but still really versatile. You have a handle on the exterior, water bottle pocket. You have a comfortable harness system that was updated from the previous version. This one doesn't feel as breathable or robust, maybe as the CTB26 or the Air Travel Pack 3, but it still offers plenty of comfort. You have a luggage pass-through, again, checking off those boxes. It does open up clamshell if you would like to be able to pack it out more easily. It has a separate suspended, well-padded laptop compartment. One of the nice bonuses with this one is that it also includes a separate shoe compartment. So if you're looking for something that can work well for the gym or that will keep your dirty clothes or your shoes separate from your other items when you're traveling, then this is gonna be unique to this bag. And yeah, if you're looking for something durable, a little bit smaller, but still flexible, then this is gonna be a solid option to consider. If you carry a lot of camera gear and you wanna have a little bit more protection and peace of mind, while having some of the features that I've been talking about in this video, the Wandered Provoke is still gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. Aesthetically, it's maybe not my favorite and I'm also not crazy about roll tops per se, but there is a lot of great stuff happening with this bag. The exterior materials are kind of a tarpaulin-like fabric that feels like it's gonna offer a ton of weather resistance. You have uh, external water bottle pocket that has this mechanism here so you can hide it away if you don't wanna use it. Uh, but great to have at least one of those. You have the tote bag handles at the top if you wanna carry it that way. Very comfortable, padded, breathable harness system that was recently updated and improved in the second edition. You have a luggage pass-through that is also oriented in the same direction as the laptop compartment, which is padded, easily accessible. And then this does open up fully clamshell so that you can easily organize it or you know, pair it with the camera cube accessories that Wandered sells. There is a side pocket here that would allow you to grab your camera quickly while you're still wearing the bag, if that's the type of thing that you like to do. You have a quick access pocket at the top with a soft fleece lining. And then the roll top, even though it's not my favorite way 
uh, to access a bag. It does come with some nice benefits. First of all, just weather resistance. You can really tighten this down and secure it to keep your stuff protected. And then you can expand the volume up if you're carrying a little bit more gear. You can, you know, just give yourself some extra flexibility, um, particularly when you're traveling, even though this can compress down to about 21 liters, it's great that you can expand it up to 26 or so, so that gets it closer to the Phoenix size. You also have quick access pocket on the front so that you can grab your accessories and attachment points all around so you can configure it with straps uh, and uh, wandered tech pouches. So just a really versatile, durable bag. And again, if you carry a lot of camera gear and you wanna make sure that it's dry and protected, that's, this is gonna be a really solid option to take a look at. Boundary Supplies Errant Pack is one that I have used a ton over the past few years. It's one of my favorite tech and sort of adventure focused bags, really solid exterior fabrics. As far as the features that it has that I love, the back panel and straps are very robust, breathable. I really like the ridges on the padding as well as the air channel that's in the middle. You have a strap that comes out that allows you to create a luggage pasture so you can rest this on your suitcase. You have an external water bottle pocket, well padded laptop and tablet sleeves, which isn't always the case to have both of those options. So great system here, really feels like your tech is gonna be protected. This is another one of those rare bags that does have a separate shoe compartment in the bottom. It's a little bit small. I've found it doesn't quite work for a size 11 and a half shoe, but you know, if you have smaller shoes or you use a very thin shoe slippers, it could also work as a great spot for gym clothes. Or if you're going to the beach, you can toss in your bathing suit. You have the ability to access this from the top in addition to a clamshell opening. So this is gonna work well with their camera accessories. You can you know, reach down, grab your camera when you need to, and then just secure it with the magnetic buckles. You have a pocket here, you have a side pocket. There's a lot of modular accessories, the keychain accessories. So this is gonna be the one that has a lot of those bells and whistles that maybe not everybody uses, but I love the appearance and the feature set that it offers. It's really solid. And you know, the fact that it also comes in at a smaller daily bag-ish size, if you're looking for something versatile, outdoorsy, and that's gonna give you a modular ecosystem of stuff, then this is gonna be a great one to consider as well. Another really interesting option is the Peter McKinnon and Nomadic camera pack. This is the 25 liter version that was released a little more recently. They also have a 35 liter travel backpack, uh, which is an interesting option if you need something larger. And you know, I know that not everybody is crazy about these collaborations as far as the aesthetic. The aesthetic isn't my favorite among the bags that I've looked at. It's a little kind of futuristic and shiny, and that's generally been my thought on Nomadic's bags, but they offer such great functionality that I still kind of overlook that. So this one is another one of those that I didn't expect to have all the boxes sort of checked, but it really does. I mean, it stands up super well on its own. It's got two large external water bottle pockets. I know these can be a little controversial as far as their implementation. They look kind of silly. It looks like a jet pack. I'm not crazy about that, but they do offer enough space to be very useful. And then I like that they just kind of hide away when they're not in use. Very robust harness system on this, breathable, thick padding. It does have a nice luggage pass-through, separate, well-padded and suspended laptop sleeve. And even though the orientation doesn't match here, I found that it's pretty easy to place this on my luggage and get the laptop in and out. It does open up fully clamshell so that you can access the main area. Which is, which is very nice to you know, see. Very unique, simple layout. You can pair it with a lot of accessories that Nomadic and Peter McKinnon put together. Have some zippered pockets on the back. You don't really have a ton of external organization, which is maybe the one knock against it. You do have this sort of top quick access area, little zippered pocket, and then very weather resistant materials, well protected zippers, the fabric. So if you, you know, like Peter McKinnon or you like Nomadic's branding, or you're just looking for something very robust and weather resistant and comfortable, then this is gonna be an awesome one to look, take a look at. Up next, we have the Soulguard Life Pack Endeavor. 
And like the Patagonia Mini MLC, this one really surprised me when I first used it with just the versatility and the features that it offers. One of the biggest selling points for this bag is that it actually expands and compresses, much like knack packs and nomadics travel bags. You can expand it out when you wanna travel and then when you arrive at your destination, compress it down for EDC. I really like the fairly minimal aesthetic that it has, reminds me of other tech bags that I've used. So, you know, just pretty versatile there. You have handle on the exterior at the top. You have two external water bottle pockets. Again, something that's becoming more and more rare. Uh, padded and breathable harness system. So nice amount of padding. And then there's some elevation on the back. You have a luggage pass through here. And I like that you do have the correct orientation between luggage pass through and laptop compartment. Speaking of the laptop area, you have some nice internal organization here for your tech and EDC items. You have a fleece line and padded laptop compartment. So it feels like your device is gonna be safe. And then you also have, you know, a really spacious main compartment. It's not clamshell opening per se. It's got this kind of like half opening but it comes down enough so that you can still load it out pretty easily. And this does pair with a hanging and compressible closet accessory. You can check out the video that I did for the life pack. I'm not as crazy about that. I still kind of prefer using packing cubes, uh, but nice, you know, if that's something that you're looking to try out, that it pairs well with this bag. So good amount of space here. And one of the differences between this and say the CTB26 is maybe in the durability. I don't think that this fabric feels as robust as the ones that Evergoods are using. This is made out of recycled water bottles, so there is a sustainability angle to this bag if that's something that's important to you, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be quite as robust. It is a little bit lighter, which is you know definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, but in general, for most people's use cases, if you just need something that it's gonna offer the features that you know I've been talking about throughout this video and maybe just give you that extra bit of flexibility because of the ability to expand, then this is gonna be a good option to take a look at. If you're looking for something with more of a heritage vibe, one of my favorites is the Raven 28. Another bag that I've used over a number of years, I come back to it all the time. I just love the way that this bag looks, very classic, outdoorsy vibe. At 28 liters, it can hold an impressive amount. For minimal travel, it works well. And it's got a pretty compact form factor, even at 28 liters. It can tend to stick out a little bit when you pack it out, but this layout is just fantastic. You have some great pocketing, a large main area, a separate and well-padded laptop compartment with a fleece lining. They fixed what was my largest issue with this original version of the bag in that it wasn't very breathable. Now you have breathability on the straps and the back paneling. It's still not as robust as some of the other bags on this list, but this does come in at a much lower price point. So if you're looking for something affordable, that's something to keep in mind. It doesn't have a built-in luggage pass-through, but it does have some attachment points on the sides that I have paired with third-party straps to rest this on my suitcase when I've been traveling. And it's offered in a few different colors. The fabric on this is Fjall Raven's G1000, so it's maybe not off the shelf, gonna be as weather resistant as some of the other more technical fabrics, but it does offer protection. You can wax it as well to really just make it work well in heavier rain if needed. It's a durable bag, it looks great, and again, if you're looking for something that's under $200, that's gonna give you a lot of the features that I've been calling out throughout the video, the water bottle pockets, the laptop compartment, the space, the organization, then I absolutely recommend you take a look at this one. The Heim Planet Transit 28 is a bag that I don't get to revisit as often as I would like to, but when I do, I'm reminded what a really interesting and versatile bag this is. Heim Planet has some very interesting fabrics that are made with sustainable processes, so really durable, nice sort of subdued aesthetic. Evergoods alike, in my opinion. This one comes in at 28 liters, so minimal travel bag size. It's a little bit big for EDC for some people, but again, because of its you know flexible nature, it doesn't really stick out that much when you don't have it packed out. It doesn't feel overwhelmingly big. I can still walk with it 
if needed. You have a pretty comfortable harness system. This is the area where I think it maybe doesn't hold up to the Air or the Evergoods CTB26 in particular. You do have some load lifters, you have sternum strap. The straps do have some padding. It's just not my particular favorite type of padding. They feel a little bit thin for the size of the bag. Same on the back paneling. It's just not quite as breathable as the other bags in my opinion, but you know, you still have a good level of comfort and you have a luggage pass through here on the back, which is oriented the same direction as the laptop compartment. So that is a big plus for the Heim Planet bag. You have a separate laptop and tech area with a well padded suspended sleeve that also has a soft fleece lining. So a good implementation there. One of the nice things about this bag is that you can actually remove the divider that separates the laptop area from the main clamshell compartment and just have one large area if you prefer to have less organization um, or you can keep them separate. I always keep them separate because I like having my work stuff, my tech stuff. You have some slip pockets, uh, an area for your tablet. You have some zippered pockets on that divider. You have a very nice top quick access pocket with a decent amount of space one on the side so that you can swing the bag around and grab some of your smaller accessories quickly. And then you have an external water bottle pocket, only one on this one, but still it's got a nice durable material, some compression straps, you have a side handle, and then the main area, maybe not full, full clamshell, but pretty much. I mean, it goes down more than enough so that you can pack it out, 28 liters of space, which is gonna be great with packing cubes for minimal travel or your day-to-day. -day. So another really great option if you're looking for something with a very subdued look with a versatile feature set and that's gonna work well for travel or a larger EDC. The Able Carry Max is a bag that I seem to feature in many different videos, which speaks to the versatility that it offers. It comes in at 30 liters, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than the CTB26, particularly for EDC. The height of this is a little bit tall for me, but I can get away with it, and it, because of its sleek sort of silhouette and shape, it doesn't feel that big, so depending on your height and preferences, you know, this may work out well for you for minimal travel or EDC, but as far as the features themselves, this has an X-Pack exterior. So again, if you like the Phoenix V2 version of the CTB and you want X-Pack, the extra weather resistance that it brings, this has that. It has a separate and well padded laptop compartment as well as some organization here for some of your tech items. Really comfortable straps. Shoulder straps here, they're very robust, thick. They offer a nice amount of breathability. The back panel also has some nice padding. You have a luggage pass-through, a handle that pairs with that luggage pass-through, some nice organization throughout. You have a quick access pocket on the front, and then you have an interesting take on the water bottle pocket. This one doesn't have a traditional one that's on the outside. It actually goes inwards. It takes up some of the volume from the main compartment, but still nice that you have a place to put your water bottle that's separate from all your other stuff. And then of course you have the clamshell style opening. It comes pretty much all the way down here with the very robust YKK zippers. 30 liters of space, so you can really pack this out. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something that has X-Pack, that's got really you know great durable materials and a sleek modern form factor that also has kind of a tactical flair with this A-frame webbing on the bottom, then this is gonna be a solid option to consider as well. And so that's it. That is our look back at the Evergood CTB26, one of my favorite bags of all time and some of the alternatives that come closest if you're looking for something a little bit different. Hopefully this video was helpful and if you have any questions on the bags that I featured in this video or suggestions for similar bags that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I'll make sure to include links in the description below to the in-depth reviews that I've done for all the bags that I featured as well to some of the other roundup videos that I've done in the past. And I want to thank you as always for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.